Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. So in this video, uh, it's going to be a little bit different than usual. I'm going to go over the cloud resume challenge. So if you don't know about it, there's a resume going around from a cloud guru to create a resume in Azure. And I figured I'd show you guys what I did and explain a little bit what happened in the background. It's not exactly the same as what they, they are asking in the challenge. I went a little bit above and beyond. Uh, I started this before they actually did, did the challenge. And the goal of this was really to show you guys like all of Azure or as many things about Azure as possible. So it has a lot of things that are really next level and things you probably would see if you were taking a um, administrator or developer certification in Azure. So let's go to the computer. All right, so this is my resume right here. So this is the website. If you don't like orange, well, too bad, because bam, in your face, I got orange there. Um, this is the resume, and I also did it so like, you can click, and it will highlight all the the parts of your, my resume that have like that skill. So if we do PowerShell, there you go. Over the years, you see everything that I did with PowerShell and all that. So that was fun, uh, but one thing you may not notice about this is none of this is actually hard coded into the the website. All of this is dynamically generated and stored in a database. So, and there's also this thing where if you go to admin, right, slash admin. So here, this is the admin console. Um, just give it a couple minutes to wake up in the serverless background, but it should be start loading all the data that is there. There we go. So this is all the data that is there and I can edit it and it will be generated differently. So let's say hi there with a comma. Let's just switch it up with a little comma and that's all we're, we're changing. And we submitted it and now we can go back to the regular one. Sorry. And there you go. See, hi there, boom. So I don't even have to change the website to do it. And it's very fun. So now let's go back in the back end to look at what I did. Okay, let's look at Azure. And so I have a subscription dedicated to everything I did and um, or, or a resource group. And as you can see, there's a lot of things in there. I had fun. Uh, so here's the way it works. So the very front end, the very first thing you see here is the content delivery network. That's what is distributing my website. And here you can see this is the host name, this is the website, this is the domain. So if you go to resume.carolinecarry.com, you can go to my website and you can see the website that I created. And so this is the CDN, Content Delivery Network, for this storage account, which if you go here into um, static website, where are you? Static website, it's stored in here, see? That's where everything is stored. Index, error document, the same thing. So that, that's where the code resides. And if we can look into the blob storage here in the containers, you can see this is the website. Now there's a lot of things because every time it compiles, it creates new files. Um, this is an Angular project, so it will create new things all the time, uh, which is fine. It just needs to be cleaned up at some point. Okay, so now if we go back here, you can see the first thing, and we'll, we'll go over this whole thing being queried later. The, whole, the first thing we are doing here is getting visitors. So, now this is a tricky one. It sounds easy, but I actually made it crazy complicated because, you know, I had to. So here's what it does. This one is, it's fun. So it goes into a function, Azure function, right? And so we have a function here, which is called, come on, post visitor. So every time a visitor comes here, it's gonna make a request. Actually, I named it post because I wanted a post, but it's a get uh, REST API. And what this does 
is basically, so basically what this does is it will take the IP address here and it will put it to a queue, right? A storage queue. Because the problem with posting things is that if everybody writes in the database, you can get into concurrent uh, race conditions with your database and many people write into it. And it doesn't really scale very well, but because you basically have to query the document, get the document, update the value, then post a new value to the database. And then the next function has to do the same thing. So what I did is I posted to a queue and that queue then triggers another Azure function. So if, if I have a thousand visitors coming in at the same time, they will get queued, they will get processed, and it will then update the count. But I'm doing something else. I'm doing something else in here. Here, I have atlas at microsoft.com and I invoke that. And what is that? Well, that's the Azure um, Maps. So with Azure Maps, I look up where your IP address is coming from so I can get statistics about who uses my website. So I can get statistics in the future about here's how many people from the US visited, how many people from India visited and all that stuff. I don't store your IP address. I just keep it <laughs> for, for processing. So, but and then it gets deleted. And then I update the, the total for the countries and the, uh, the total. But the the, po the get function, the original one, will actually um, give you a number plus one, whatever the total is currently plus one. But that, that was too simple, right? So I added another layer. And the other layer here is API management. So if you don't know what API management, this is basically a way to put a front end on your APIs. So um, instead of having my APIs go straight to the Azure function, I can make it so that there's this API management layer in the middle. And so I have Cloud Resume here, and you can see all the function and all the operations that you can make with those uh, functions. And you have different APIs, and I'll go into that in a minute. Let's see, one thing I can do is, for example, th there's a function post visitors, right? And it goes to slash visitors and get instead of post visitors because I have this little thing that says write, rewrite the URL so that it points to post visitors, which is great because I can make it ugly in the back end and pretty in the front end. And you guys don't need to know that. So it's pretty cool. Uh, I have the, the other thing here where I have my administrative functions and those, those have a Java web token validation. So that means that if you're not authenticated to Azure, if you're not, if you're not authenticated to my application, you can't post anything, which is great. The, that, that's a nice little um, gate uh, on my application. So people don't just update my data however they want. And sure, I could have implemented that in Azure Functions, but I decided not to. And it's nice because I have a nice little uh, front end for all my APIs, so I can manage all of them. And if I want to cut access, I don't have to cut access to everything. I can just cut access in the front end and without deleting the APIs. Uh, another great thing with this is I have application insight. Note that, um, I mean, it's the same thing with Azure Functions. I have applications insight, but here, see, you can see the, the refresh. Boop. That's what happens when I refresh the data. And you can also have it live, right? Live day, live metrics. Let's have it load. Now let's go back to our resume. Let's refresh it. And you'll see, just give it a second, boom. There you go. So you can see it's pretty nice. You can see live, like what happens and how many requests and if there's any failures and all that stuff. So it's pretty neat. And it's all in one place for all of it. Um, so that's API management right here. I also have a Cosmos DB in the backend to store all the data. 
And here the weight structure, uh, this is an SQL API because that's the only thing that Azure Functions supports, sadly. Um, but there we go. So I have jobs where each job is stored here with the responsibility and the skills. I have, that can be trashed. So that can be trashed. I have the skills, and I think the skills can be trashed too. Mm, I'll use that at some point. I have the user, which is my information here. And I mean, of course, there's only one user, but you know, that could be expanded to multiple users if we ever wanted to, which is nice. And this is my description. This is all the data. And I have data about visitors. So see, US, I mean, that's me, really. 23 visitors, US, that's it. That's all I store. Um, and yeah, there's a slight discrepancy here, but not a big deal. Okay. Then what else do I have? I have a lot of things in here. Ooh, this is cool. Here for the Azure Maps, I have the key, the, the, the client ID for the Azure Map stored in Azure Key Vault. And the Azure function here, do, 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 do. come on, the configuration. If you go into the configuration, see Azure Maps key, boom. So that's linked to the Azure Maps, which is great because then I don't have to store the key. The keys can be rotated, no problem. So that, that's another layer of complexity added to this whole thing. Um, and really that's about it. Oh yeah, no, there's another thing. There's another thing here. If we go to Azure Active Directory and all the blurred thing is because I don't feel like sharing this critical information about my subscription. So I have an extension that will blur all this, but um, it's, it's not normally blurred. I can unblur it on demand. So if I look at app registrations here, I have the application ID that is being used for my application. And that, that's the, the, the APIs and the secrets and all that stuff that is necessary to make it work. <sighs> that's a lot. Do you wanna see the code? Let's go look at the code. So if we look at the code, here. So this is in the Angular application and everything is templatized. Actually, if we go back here and we go to GitHub here, if we go to my repository, oh, right here. If we go here, this is the application and you could put it, potentially use it yourself. Um, the, I haven't really um, made it generally available to anyone, so it's really just basic and working, but it's not nicely done. Uh, but if we look here at the environment variables here, oh, environment production, sorry. So if we go into the environment production, you can see this is, this is not hardwired at all. So how I get those values into the code is through Azure DevOps, yep. So I have Azure DevOps here. So I have Azure DevOps here. And here you can see I replace all the variable with variables that I have stored in here, right? So everything is stored in here and replaced as needed in this um, script, in this YAML file. So every time I commit a new commit, the code gets redeployed automatically to the the storage account if recompiled um, and actually gets compiled on my computer because I made it so that it just runs on my computer. So if I don't want it to compile, it doesn't compile. Um, but it will run and it will replace everything uh, the way it's supposed to. So pretty cool. So that's my cloud resume and we can go back here and see this is, this is it. This is how it looks. Um, if you are interested in tutorials, the one thing I'm curious about is, do you want to know about the development of the code itself, or do you just care about how I configure the infrastructure? So let me know in the comments right here, and let me know if you want me to go over the code, knowing that it's going to be an Angular 
uh, project and maybe you don't know Angular and might not be worth it for you, but let me know. So this is, this is my project. I hope you liked it. I hope it inspired you to do something creative and um, yeah. Thank you. Bye.